people live and we are live how you doing martin good adam how are you good man okay Nervous. first first things first how did i find you um mate you actually reached out to me at the go high level facebook group because i was in urgent need of someone to help me um with one of my clients that is my friend as well. Um, I was just gonna help her with Facebook ads, showed her sort of like what my plan was. And then when she saw this in, inside system, uh, like what DHL can do, she was just like, hey, can we just move our entire thing over to this? Because this looks way better. And I was like, uh, yeah, you can, it, it can definitely work for you, but I'm gonna need someone to help me because uh, I want to make sure that it's going to work for you properly and not just me putting on some uh, easy patches. So maybe you reached out and um, I know I put you a bit in, in a corner, but uh, yeah, we'll work together. Oh, no, I put myself, I put myself in the corner, man. <laughs> True. We, uh, how, so how long have you been using go high level? Uh, for a month. Okay. So like you're fresh, you're, you're fresh meat. Yes, mate. Love it. Okay, cool. So, Okay. I want to make a quick, so anybody watching this right now, live inside the high level mastery group, let me know if you're watching it. So just comment on this. Let me know that you're here. I also need you. If you want me to see your name, I need you guys to click that StreamYard slash Facebook link um, just so that I can see your name. If you do comment. So Ryan Smith just made a comment. Um, and then we've got Facebook user and then we've got Anne Marie Waltz. So Facebook user. Hi, I am here. I don't know who you are. So you need to actually click that StreamYard slash Facebook link so that I can actually see who you are. Now, what we're going to be doing, um, we are virtually going to be starting completely from scratch. Right, Martin? Right. Um, now, what Martin did originally is what probably most new agency owners would do and say, hey, High Level's actually already got these amazing snapshots built. Um, I'll just use one of those and I'll be good. I'll be off to the races. Um, and I'm going to show you guys why that's not true. Um, why those snapshots are actually awful and why you guys need to learn how to structure your sub accounts yourself. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to show you what he's already got loaded in and we're going to delete everything. Um, and then we're going to start, we're going to start from scratch with the exception of the funnel that you've started. I don't want to, I don't want to override that, but there are a couple pieces inside the funnel that we're also going to go over. We're going to tweak and we're going to change. Um, so for anybody watching this, um, if, as we go along, you have a question on, Hey, why did you do that? Or how did you do that? Or whatever, first and foremost, it's going, it's recorded, it's streaming live in the group, it's gonna be in the group, it's gonna live in the group. Um, you'll be able to access it at any time. Um, but if you have like a, why did you do that question, just drop it in the chat. We're on StreamYard, I can see your questions and your answers and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and so I'll do my best to answer it. But we're on the clock, I've got two hours and we're gonna try to get as much of this done as humanly possible. Um, Facebook user, not sure what link to click. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to drop the link in the comments so that everybody can access it. All right. Hopefully that went through, um, streamyard.com slash Facebook, Shelly Sherman. Thank you. Um, okay. You ready, Martin? Ready. Okay. I want you to give everybody here a really quick overall summary of your client said, I want to do everything. I want to move everything over. So what are we moving over? How are we building this? What's the structure that we're going for here? All right. So their main concern right now is they want more clients. So the biggest thing is to get the funnel up and running, uh, get a good funnel, get it up and running, get the automations uh, done around that whole journey to make it easier for, for them to manage the, the new leads. And then they also wanted to then bring over um, their monthly their monthly promotions that they have going out in their old system, as well as um, a couple of other templates that they had in there. So initially, 
that would probably be the focus just to get that up and uh, the basic set up so that they can actually run it really well and then whatever whatever is left after that can be done over the next couple of weeks but their main priority right now is get a system set up that can just get them some really good leads okay and so when we originally talked on messenger you had sent me a whole bunch of sample sites that they were working with um sounded like parent companies or sister companies Franchises, that were doing similar yeah. things um and they were basically going straight for the appointment in the funnel. There was no opt-in. There was no Facebook lead form. They're just like book an appointment or bust kind of thing, right? Correct. Okay. Um, you also sent me some copies. So we'll use that in some of the campaigns that we build out. Um, let's dive in. So really what we're doing is we're building at least an initial structure for a lead to come in, book an appointment, get nurtured, um, appointment reminders, and probably a little bit of post because it's a gym, right? So they want them to come back next week um, Correct. and things like that. So we're going to try to build some of the post workout or post free draw trial stuff to try to get them back in. Exactly. And then the, the pipeline as well, so that their staff can actually, depending on who is in there at any given day, they can manage the leads and they want to assign like certain members to certain leads. So they want the system as they move forward to be able to easily assign new leads to certain members of the gym so that they are the ones that take care of their journey within the funnel. Okay. That's a good so thing to find. talk about because we didn't talk about that yet. Uh, multiple users that are being assigned depending on when and where somebody is, correct? Correct. So they could be assigned to user A in step one, and then they do step one, two, and three, and then they're assigned to user B. Is that kind of the idea? Yes, correct. Or it could be that, you know, if they got 20 leads coming in, that they assign five of them to one person, another five to another person, and then they got become it. responsible of turning them into paying clients. Okay. And when somebody books an appointment in the calendar, is that appointment to go into the gym for a consultation or is that an appointment for a phone call? What are we looking at here? So, so the way that they've set it up at the moment is that, um, so what, what we could see in the funnel is that they have an offer, which is like a value of more than $500 that they are offering at 199. And they are currently targeting a female over 40. And so previously they had like all of these forms that they needed to fill in. They needed to download an app. They had to pay. And it was just, there's too many stumbling blocks on it. So what we've discussed right now is like, hey, they know what the offer is. Let them just book, let them book their first appointment and then sell them in the gym. Okay, so we're not trying to pay for the appointment. We're just no, get them to correct. come into the gym and then sell them in there. Correct. So they've seen, they've seen the ad, they, click, they clicked on the ad, they've gone to the funnel that explains the offer. They have booked in their first session and when they come in for that first session, the staff, they know that this person came off of this ad and this funnel. And we now need to explain to them, this is how this offer works. Come in, we, we have the session. And then afterwards, they'll set, sign them up for, for, for the promotion that they're running. That, that's sort of like what they want to do. All right. Let's do it. All you right. ready? <laughs> yes. All right, everybody's familiar with this screen. Go high level. Um, guys, in the comments while you're watching this, interact, please. I want to know who's here and that this is even worthwhile to anybody. So let us know if you're liking what you're seeing or if things make sense or if you've got any questions. Um, oohs and ahs and wows are also welcome. So uh, please do engage a little bit. So first things first, you loaded in an existing GHL snapshot. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, what do they come with? They come with a pipeline. So they've got the, your promotion pipeline. That's what they always call them. Um, and they're set up new leads, hot leads, booking requests, booked, conf booked, confirmed and services sold. So that's actually not terrible for what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, but we're not going to use it. Um, cause everybody's got a different customer journey. Now, the way that I like to build out my snapshots is I like to think about that customer journey. How are they getting in? Like, how are we collecting their name, email, and phone number? What's the next step that we want to get them into? Um, and then we build our pipeline accordingly. So every single time they take the next action that we want them to take, they move. 
Um, and then we try to get them to take the next action and then they move and then the next action and then they move. So that's how I build my pipelines. Um, so for anybody watching here, uh, just type in customer journey so that you understand pipelines equal customer journey. That's how I always build my pipeline structures. Okay. So default snapshot, you're going to get the, your promotion pipeline. Um, then you're also going to get inside automation. You're going to get campaigns and triggers. Um, these make me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit because I originally, when I first got high level, um, everything was done with campaigns and triggers. And this is probably going to answer some questions for people who are like, what's the difference? What's the difference between campaigns, triggers, and workflows? Well, with campaigns and triggers, you have to build your campaign first. Uh, so just so everybody knows, Martin accidentally loaded two um, snapshots in here. So now we've got two different campaigns and workflow and trigger structures here. So with campaigns, you have to build the campaign first. And when you build the campaign, it looks like this. Um, so if you're familiar with workflows, you can kind of see how this all works. But then in order to get this campaign to fire, you have to link that campaign to a trigger. And so campaigns and triggers are, so here it is, form submitted, form is this, and then add them to this, send this uh, update opportunity. What do you, So triggers and campaigns are two separate entities in the existing high level, we're in the high level snapshots, which is why I hate them. Um, because workflows takes triggers and campaigns and puts them into the same world. Um, which is so much easier to manage. And the really cool thing about workflows is that you can do a trigger to get somebody into the workflow, but then you can have triggers, little mini triggers within the workflow to do certain things based on an outcome that you're, you're trying to get. So campaigns and triggers in the go high level default snapshots are, are default. They're turned on, you get them and I just want to delete them. So we're going to do that. Um, and then they also have some default custom values. Now, again, not terrible. Um, we're gonna we're gonna reuse some of these, but we're not gonna reuse all of them. Um, so I'm actually just gonna start by deleting all of these. And then I'm gonna show you guys the custom values that I like to put in every single one of my snapshots. Um, I should have done this ahead of time, but I really wanted to make sure everybody was aware that, hey, this is the stuff that's coming in when you load a snapshot. And I kind of want to, I wanted to do this live to encourage people not to do that. Um, build your own because then you're going to know it. Um, and if you buy somebody else's snapshot, you know, go in with a fine tooth comb and figure out exactly what they're doing. Because if your customer then comes to you and says, hey, how does this work? And you have no idea. Um you're not going to be doing yourself any favors. So if you do buy a snapshot from somebody, make sure you go through it with a fine tooth comb to understand what they're doing. Um, and in this case, we're just going to rebuild it from scratch. Um, okay. We're going to go into business profile here and we're just going to get rid of campaigns and triggers right here in the enable depreciated features and just click that update button. Um, missed call text back. Does your client want that turned on Martin? Uh, missed call text back uh, yes yeah so i'm just here in australia we actually need to do a regulatory bundle so i'm just doing that for her at the moment but they'll definitely have that turned on once we've got it set up okay did you want it to say the default hey i saw we missed your call how can i help or do you want to change uh, that up a little bit um if you have any recommendations then definitely keen to see what what works good for the sake of this we'll we'll leave it we'll leave Perfect. it blank now one thing to be aware of with missed call text back um, is that if I call you and you don't pick up, I'm going to get a text. If I call you again and you don't pick up, I'm going to get the exact same text. And so me personally, I don't like to use the default missed call text back because it's going to say the same thing every single time somebody comes in. And so it's very obvious that it's not a real person. And whenever I'm building an automation, I want it to feel real, right? There's things that are promotional that absolutely people are going to know it's a promotion. Um, but for the other texts, you want it to feel real, right? Um, I would love to learn to turn that off. 
Okay, R Ryan, here's how you turn it off. Done. I just turned it off. Uh, so there's just a checkbox inside business profile to enable or disable missed call text back. Uh, it's as simple as that. So I'm going to leave it on for this one right now. Okay, so that's step number one. We've blown out our custom values. Now let's go and delete the pipeline. Uh, so if you go into opportunities, pipelines, we're going to delete this one. Now, again, I could have used this one, but I want to show everybody kind of how to do it. Oh, it's not going to let me delete it because it's the only one, hey? No, it should. It should. Yes, I want to delete that pipeline. Go ahead. Delete it. All right. Well, high level is being high level today. Oh, there we go. Gone. Okay, great. Here's how, Martin, we are going to start this build. This is how I start every build. And so, and again, what did, what did I say? Pipeline equals what? Clients. Pipeline equals customer journey, right? Customer journey. So we want to build the customer journey that you want to have happen within the pipeline first. That's the very first thing we're going to do. So let's go and create our pipeline. Um, now, you might have different promotions. You might have different products. You might have different services. Um, I often recommend that you separate them into their own pipelines. And you'll see why I do this and how I do this using workflows to keep everything neat and tidy. Because if you offer multiple services and multiple promotions and multiple all these things, and you're using them in the same pipeline, and you don't have allowed duplicate opportunity turned on, it, it just becomes messy. And so I like to keep this really, really clean. Um, and so the way that I often label these is like, my first pipeline is, is dedicated only to new leads. So I actually label it pipeline zero. And again, you can come in and change this at any point if you're like, oh, well, I get the concept here, but I'm not a fan. I'm just going to build it the way that I typically build it. Um, and hopefully it'll all make sense. Um, so this is new lead pipeline. Okay. Now, typically, if you're not going straight for an appointment, you might be running lead form ads. You might have an opt-in page um, and then go to an appointment. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to create a new lead slash opt-in. It's going to be the first pipeline stage. So what this does is this allows you to run a campaign to an opt-in page that doesn't have a calendar, but it's just got an opt-in form. Um, or you can also run Facebook lead form ads. And then this is where you're going to collect all of that contact and all of those leads. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you do get a new lead that opts in, whether that's through Facebook or through a um, funnel, obviously the next stage is we want them to book an appointment. Um, so, there's kind of two things that happen in between there, right? You want to get them engaging. You want to get them talking. You want to say, you want them to say, yes, I did opt in for that or effectively give you permission to continue talking to them. So the next stage that I almost always put in is responded. Um, because chances are we're going to be hitting them with text messages right away saying, Hey, thanks. I saw that you, you were looking for this shiny thing. Um, are you interested in booking a call? You want to get them engaging. You want to get them talking. And then you want to know, did they engage? Did they talk? Um, and we want to make sure that that's very, very clear to both you and your client. Um, okay. Next one is they've responded. The goal is to get them to book an appointment. Book an appointment. Ta-da. Um, and then there's kind of two ways to think about this. Um, either they showed up to the appointment or they didn't um, or they canceled or they rescheduled, right? Um, and so we need to make room for that inside the pipeline and inside the automation. Um, so appointment, no show is a good one slash canceled. Now, again, there's two trains of thought here. There is, I like to think of everything linear. So if they're not progressing in the pipeline, they're moving backwards in the pipeline, right? So I actually like to put the appointment no-show cancellation before booked appointment in the pipeline because 
if they made it to a booked appointment, they progress. But if they don't show up for that appointment or they cancel it, they, they degress, they move backwards. And so that's what I want to be able to show. Now, some people just do no shows forwards. Um, and I'll show you that once we get into the workflows. So we've got booked appointment. Um, again, with yours, Martin, correct me if I'm wrong. The booked appointment is like, they showed up at the gym, right? Yes. Yeah. So I guess if you could look at it two ways, so you got booked appointment. Hey, did they actually book an appointment on the funnel landing page? And then I guess the next step would be, did they actually show up for the, for the first, uh, for, for the first session? Okay. Now I've done this before. I'm just going to ask what you think your client would say to this. Do they have any sort of registration form? Um, or like yeah. a QR code where they can scan to sign in. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. We're going to do that. Um, and then after they show up for the first session, that's where the sales process starts, right? Correct. Okay. That's the um, way we've, we've scheduled, we've structured this particular campaign. Yeah. And so now what, what would you say is the next step? So they, the first session showed up really now we're doing the selling here. Correct. That's right. Yeah. So after that, I guess either they become a client, so they sign up for this particular promotion or they don't. Okay. They either signed up, no sign up, really are the two options, right? Correct. Now, again, I'm going to move the further down the pipeline, the, the closer to the money. That's kind of how I like to do it. So if they didn't sign up, this is actually going to be we can take this out, but this is going to be like a nurture sequence. Yeah. Okay, to try to get them to come back. Yeah. Okay. Um, then the last one is that they signed up. Now there's two more, there's two more pipeline stages that I almost always add to every single snapshot that I build. Um, because this is a reality. This is something that not a lot of people think about when they're building and selling snapshots is that, Hey, sometimes people don't respond. Sometimes people just ignore your messages. So what happens to those people? Do you just leave them in a pipeline stage forever because at one point they responded, but then they're there for a year? No, we don't want to do that. We want to, we want to keep this clean. We want to keep it organized so that everybody knows what's going on. Okay. So unresponsive is my, my end stage. So really this is like your closed one. If they get to this stage in the pipeline, that's the money stage right there. But then beyond that, we have a couple other stages because we want to continue to nurture unresponsive people. And then you're also going to run into unsubscribes, right? So people who say stop. Um, now, the reason that I actually make unsubscribe a pipeline stage and I make it a function within the system um, is specifically because I've been running Facebook ads for five plus years. And I know that sometimes the same person's contact information is going to get used multiple times just to spam your ad. And so if somebody unsubscribes, we want to DND them and we want to make sure that their contact stays in the system so that if somebody uses their contact information again, we're not hitting them up again. They're in D and D they live and they exist in the system, but they're nowhere to be seen, right? They're in that unsubscribe lost. They're out of the system. They're do not disturb. If somebody uses their information again, then nothing's going to happen. They're going to stay there and they're going to stay in do not disturb. Make sense. Yeah. All right. How does this look for an initial customer journey? That looks good. Yeah, makes that that makes complete sense. Okay, sweet. So we've got our first pipeline. Now, if you build new offers or you've got new promotions and new things like that, I highly recommend that you do things like this. Like you create another pipeline for that promotion um, because it's just going to keep things cleaner. Okay. Um, so just all right. quickly on that, Adam. So they are currently running female over 40. And their idea is like, if they can get that to work, they'll do like men, men over 30, you know, like they'll do all these different uh, sort of age groups, et cetera. So yeah. would you create, would you create a new one for each of those 
um, for each of those different target groups? That's personally how I would do it. Um, and just because it honestly, it just keeps things so much cleaner, so much more segmented. And when you do something um, in one pipeline, it doesn't affect the other. Uh, now I've, I've done builds where, you know, once somebody hits a certain stage in pipeline one, it actually moves to pipeline two because that's how the client wanted it to work. Right. So it's like lead nurturing and then active clients and then long-term follow-up. So they wanted people to move from pipeline to pipeline to pipeline, which you can certainly do. Um, but I like to keep my offers separate. Um, so for example, yeah. uh, we work with contractors at estimator tools. We also sell estimator tools to agency owners and that's all being done inside the same sub account. We just have everything broken down between contractor clients and agency clients. Um, and we have a different customer journey and we have different things that we can fire off based on the stages that they're in. Yeah. So that's so why. You, if you did different pipelines, would you then call it like female over 40 instead of zero, uh, 0 0.1 new, new pipeline? You got it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So why don't, why don't we actually do that? Because that's, we already know that that's the first thing that's going to, going to happen. Right. Yeah. Um, that's your women over 40. Right. Yeah. There you go. So there's your women over 40. Okay. Now that we've got our customer journey thought out, now we need to think about, okay, what, what assets do we need to build inside the system in order for all of this to work? And when I say assets, I mean funnels, calendars, forms, um, surveys, like whatever we're going to use in order to collect data and progress that lead forward. Now that's where we have to start to think about this kind of stuff. Okay. So you've already built, you're starting to build the funnel. So we're going to start there. Um, you've also already grabbed the calendar from the default snapshot. So we're going to use that. Um, so that's going to be appointment, no show. So really we're going to start here with the overall assets that we're going to build. Um, and then I'm going to build a new one here. Um, I'm going to make it super basic at the moment. Um, and then you can tweak that just for the sake of time. Yeah. But we're going to have a system in which when somebody comes into the gym, either they can register or whoever's coaching the session can log them in and say that they showed up. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we've got your no sign up nurture. And then we've got your sign up one, which is, Super simple. So really at this point for this particular offer, we need two assets that we need to build. Okay. So let's go and start with the calendar. Calendar settings. Um, we're just going to use, it's, it's not a free membership, right? It's a, it's a paid. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to delete this one. Again, this was one of the ones that came from the default snapshot guys. Um, we're going to use booking request. Now, how long is a session? Or what, what should we really call this? This is like, what is the, what are they trying to sell? So, so it, it's a um, female over 40, um, four week, four week um, challenge. And this is like the first, first one, like four week challenge um what type of a description should we write here do you have any thoughts on that um i'll probably uh, i'll probably just I'll, like if i had to put it in i'll put the same thing just keep it simple and just say because that description where does that that's just internally right if so good great question if you're using the classic widget it is internal. It doesn't show, but if you use the Neo widget, it will show. All right. Okay. Got so it. The Neo, the Neo widget will have the description, the calendar name and the description on the left. And then the booking area on the right. Whereas the classic is just like calendar book here. Got it. Okay. All right. I, I haven't actually looked at those two things. So I think we keep it classic for now. And then okay. if I can show that to the client later on, and if she wants to add a description to it, then, then we can switch it to Neo. 
Okay, so we're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a slug. Now, fun fact: these slugs are universal across high level. So sometimes you put in like book a call and it doesn't work because um, it has to be unique. So sometimes what I'll do if I have a specific slug that I want to use, like this one's easy, female over forty. Um, but otherwise, I would actually put like uh, BFT, female over forty, because BFT is an identifier for your client. Um, we're gonna use classic. Appointment title, let's just call it the same here. So contact name, female over 40 challenge, or female over 40 week one or session. Um, yeah. Meeting location is on site, correct? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna do location dot address. Uh, we might have to tweak this later. I can't remember if it's underscore one or just regular one. If somebody in the live knows, is it underscore one or regular one to show the full address? Um, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, if you ever don't, here's a great tip. If you ever don't know what a custom, a custom field is, the best way to figure it out or the fastest way to figure it out is if you have a conversation, um, doesn't really matter who go in and click on the conversation and then go to your custom values to see what they are. Um, I also do this in uh, workflows and emails. So I'll go into an email and I'll just, Oh, well, it's a location address is the one I'm looking for Add it and then come and update it. Um, okay. Is there a calendar linked already? Uh, is one of it it will probably be the that one there. I'm I'm not actually sure because he's just set everything up uh, overnight. So uh, I will. That should be the one. I'll just double check with her. What was that one called? Okay, cool. Um, sync options. So one way sync means that high level can write to their calendar to their Google Calendar, meaning. It can add an appointment in the calendar. Two-way sync is where, so if I go to two-way sync, if I take that appointment and I move it. So um, I literally had to do this today. Somebody had a booked appointment today and I just moved it in my calendar. Two-way sync will refire the appointment automation, the appointment workflow. So it'll speak, it'll read and write from your calendar. Um, with disable trigger, it can read and write from the calendar but it will not fire your workflow if you manually move. So if I manually added an appointment in my Google calendar on my iPad, um, disable trigger will not fire the workflow. Um, with two-way sync on, this is probably a better way to say it. If I add an appointment manually in my iPad with two-way sync on, that user is going to get my appointment reminders. So if I go and I book dinner, like I put my whole life in my calendar, I put dropping my kids off at school. I put going for lunch with my parents. Um, I go for, I put my kids sporting events, um, all inside my Google calendar. So if I did that and I added email, that's going to fire off my appointment reminder sequence to that email. Um, so that's what two way sync does. Disable trigger allows for two way sync, but does not fire off your workflow. Does that all make sense? So, so, so in this particular instance, if that particular calendar is purely for the gym, then it makes sense to have it have it the two way because if they put manual clients in they would want to take advantage of the appointment reminders as well correct yeah so one so you can do appointment reminders regardless um just so you know um the only time that the appointment reminders will happen outside of go high level is if you have two-way sync turned on so this two-way right here turned on and you add an appointment in your google calendar manually outside of go high level and you put somebody's email in there it will fire your appointment reminders for that calendar to that person does that make okay. sense yeah okay cool well, one way in this particular use case is totally fine okay yeah um all right let's move on to the next step here how long are their sessions 45 minutes, um, but you book off an hour because you come in at like, let's say seven and this 
stretching warm up, then there's the actual session, and then there's cool off. So it's like it becomes an hour session. Okay. Um, is there a minimum scheduling notice? So I can't book it and go to the gym in an hour. Uh, yeah. So we, I was talking to her about that, and she said like, what happens if people book in like tomorrow, and we have a sequence set up, you know, like that says our uh, the appointment reminders two days before. So that was actually one of the questions you had. Great question. Um, we will cover that when we build the workflow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if it's like an hour away, do you want them to be able to book or do they have to book, wait, wait a day, like book for tomorrow? I, I think it will, they will probably pretty like, they're happy for people to come in anytime. So realistically they could book whatever is available as per the sessions that are there. And because they are not running at full capacity at the moment, you know, so if they had a, a Facebook lead and that lead was like, Hey, I wonder if I can go in two hours from now. And they had a class in two yes. hours from now, they would love to have them down there. Perfect. Um, do they want to limit the range in which people can book? So meaning if I put a seven in here, um, I can only book within the next seven days. I cannot book on day eight. I cannot book on day 10. Um, if I put a 14 in here, same thing applies. I can book within two weeks, but I can't book on day 15. At the moment, they wouldn't. They're just trying to get as many clients in as possible. So okay, I don't think they would want to have any any um, uh, sort of like restrictions as to when people could come in. Okay. What are their operating hours at their gym where people can show up for these classes? Yeah, uh, I'll let you know in a second. So they are running um, Monday through Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. And are they open Saturday, Sundays at all? They are closed Sunday. They're open Saturday, 6.30 to 11 a.m. Okay, perfect. I'm going to show you guys something. Um, if I, so I've set Monday, the first day to five to six, right? That's their standard calendars. I can go to apply all, and then it will apply it Monday through Friday. If I add Saturday and Saturday has different hours and I hit the apply all button, I have to go and manually change Saturday anyway. So what I often do, especially if they have different operating hours on a Saturday and a Sunday, take the days that that are the same. So if they have Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday are the same, but Wednesday is different, I would actually turn Wednesday off here. And then I would apply all to the mass group um, that are the same. So in this case, Monday through Friday is all the same. We're just going to go apply all. That changes all of them. Now we're going to add Saturday. And what was your hours for Saturday? So uh, Saturday, sorry, mate. Um, Ten, it was 9.30 or 8.30? So Saturday was 6, 6.30 till 11 a.m. 6.30 to 11 p.m.? A 11 a.m. A.m., okay. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, you asked, will this be in their personal time zone? I'll show you that in the business profile settings uh, right away here, actually. Um, okay, so now we've got our confirmation page. Do we, Are we going to be asking them any specific questions when they book, or are they going to be um, – or is it just name, email, phone number? So, so it, yeah, uh, they just wanted to add the birth date to that if possible. Very possible. Okay. We're going to finish this and then we're going to go build a third asset and then we'll, we'll come back and do this again. Um, acknowledgement email. So do you want the system to send an email notifying them? Hey, we've got you booked in, which we'll do. So this is different from a appointment confirmation email that you would create in a workflow. This is like, the acknowledgement email where they can then add it to their calendar. Um, so what we do, what I typically do is I turn both. Well, no, not this one. I'll do those. Um, 
let the calendar auto confirm my appointment? In this case, I would say absolutely yes. Um, you just want them to be booked in and you're coming. That's the assumption. You booked it up, you booked an appointment, you're coming to the gym. Right? Yeah. And so just quickly, Adam, on that. So so the acknowledgement email is to the contact that is signing up or to the contact in correct. Um, if you had users in here, um, it would yeah. also specify which users you want. But in this yeah. particular case, we don't really need to worry too much about that. Okay, all right. And then so that's different to any workflow that we we set up. This is purely for the calendar. So when they book in, they're just like, okay, just send send an acknowledgement email to the calendar. Yeah. So and, it's this is like a calendar to calendar acknowledgement. Like, hey, you've got an appointment in your calendar. Yeah. That kind and of can that be changed like the way that looks, or is that just a, like a set thing that is set? This is relatively new. Like this is yeah. this is within the last month or so. Um I think this is set. I think that's just going to use the default settings inside the uh, inside your your email, the, yeah, your Gmail sorry. account. Um, now I also do this send invitation. So that's going to be where they can say yes and have it go directly in their calendar. Yeah. Okay. Allow rescheduling and allow cancellations. I would say yes. Um, one thing that I would probably put in here is the address. Uh, what's the B so, BFT? So it's, it's unit four slash 25 Upton street, U-P-T-O-N street. Unit four. Yeah. 25 Upton, U-P-T-O-N street. And that's in bundle B U N D A double L. Um, so this is going to be their phone number and their email. Do you, do you feel like you need to display that? Uh, yeah. So the the phone number at the moment, because we haven't set the other one up, is zero four one three. Uh, don't worry about that. Oh, um, got it. Actually, no. Here we can we can do that. What I'll do here, though, is I'll go phone. And then here's a trick that everybody needs to learn these. So location dot phone. Okay, that's going to be the phone number that you set the location to. So make the location's phone number their primary number. Um, and then this is going to be the contacts phone number and the contacts email. And then here's the rescheduling links that are going to be set up by default. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um. Do you want, so there's, there's a couple of things that you can do here. You can send a custom thank you message or you can let your funnel do the talking. So if they book an appointment in your funnel, you can tell it to go to a thank you page in your funnel and this won't show up. Um, if you don't have a thank you page in your funnel and they submit, then this will show up. What would you prefer? Got it. So so yeah, so I guess so this would show up in the same page, right? Whereas if yeah, you had the, the calendar page, will disappear and then yeah. the thank you message will show up. Like this, because again it, it's less less friction and we don't have any particular thing that we want to display after they do this. So I guess the benefit of taking this off and having a thank you page is if you want to have like don't forget to bring this, 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 this. Whereas if it's just like a thank you, it's like that transaction is done now. Is that, does that, yeah, is that no, correct? That's good. Thank you for booking your session. Look forward to. They wanted to put meeting you if, if possible. Yep. It's that possible right there. That's how possible yeah. it is. <laughs> for delete that. Thank you for booking your session. We look forward to meeting you. There we go. All right. Um, so we're going to have to create a custom form for this because you, they want to add the birthday. Yes. Right? Okay. So, yeah. so let's go complete. Let's go build that form. And the nice thing is that form is a super easy form to make because it's using all standard fields. So let's go sites, forms, form builder. I'm going to delete these again, guys. These are things that came with the standard 
snapshot. So I'm just going to delete them. We're going to start from scratch. I don't know if that actually deleted or not. Uh, do they want full name, first name, last name? What do they want? The whole thing? Full yeah. name, email, phone number, and birthday? Yeah. Uh, in down in Aussie land, do you guys say date of birth or would you just say birthday? Uh, uh, date of birth is probably fine. I don't okay. even know. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I like to make all of these required. Uh, maybe with the exception, do they want the date of birth? Like absolutely in order to book your session, no, we need to know your birthday. They would like the option of people putting it in. Okay, cool. But we got email, we got phone. Those are mandatory. So we've got required on all name, email, and phone number. Um, and then date of birth will leave as an optional. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's save that. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go back to our calendar settings and we're going to put that form in there. And I also forgot to do one very, very important thing on this calendar. Availability. Appointments per slot. Well, this is a gym session, right? So is yeah. this a private session or is this a group session? No group session. What's their largest group size? Uh, they'll probably be able to do, I'm just thinking, 35. Let's put it in at 35. Okay. Perfect. Um, now, here's another thing to consider. If they... Are they doing these, so they've, they're 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Are they literally doing 13 hours worth of these classes, like bang, 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 bang? No, or so she, she just messaged me. I just asked her, and uh, she replied. Um, she replied that they're doing 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, Monday to Friday. And then they're doing 4.45 and 5.45, Monday to Thursday and just 445 on the Friday. So they have like one, two, three, four, five morning sessions and two afternoon sessions, Monday, Monday to Thursday. Okay. And then they got only one, uh, they got five, five morning sessions and one afternoon sessions on the Friday. And then they got two morning classes on the Saturday. All right. So we're going to have to, I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to yeah. show you how to do this on Monday. Yeah, and I can go in and do it And myself. then you can go in and do the rest so that we have time. Because this, this will take a little bit of time if we have to add all of those custom hours. Um, no, no, okay. Please. What are your Monday hours again? Do them slowly. So this five. The first one, 5 o'clock. Yeah. Next one, 6. Yeah. Next one, 7. Okay. Next one, 8. Okay. And last one, 9. Okay, so nine o'clock is the last session that we can book in the morning, correct? In the morning, correct. So 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah. And now when is the second set of sessions available? So that starts at 4.45 and 5.45. Okay, this is going to make us really interesting. 4.45 p.m.? P.m., yeah. And then 545 is the last one? Yes, correct. Yeah. So okay. two, two in the afternoon. I'm going to make this six. Um, we'll have to see how this works because I'm not 100% certain if it overlaps. If it will allow – so like right now this calendar can be booked until six. But if it's, if it's an hour session booked at 545, will that go in the calendar? I'm not sure. We're going to have to test it because um, I've never done funky hours like that. We're also going to have to change this slot interval to 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be so that this first, if we don't change that to 45, um, this first appointment interval will be at five when it's really 445. And this needs to be a PM. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So that's how you do that. You just add hours and you can kind of split up your days however however you need to for this calendar to make sense. Yeah. Okay. So I'll let you do the rest um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll keep on chugging along here.
And this is just something that you have to live with when you're building go high level things that sometimes it just takes a minute. So just take a deep breath, grab a drink of water, let it load. Sometimes do a refresh. I don't know, Oliver, you tell me. You know me better than most people in this group, so you tell me. Um, okay. Now we mentioned custom values. Well, why the heck do we need custom values? Now, custom values versus custom fields. I want to make sure that everybody understands this. A custom value is a company-wide, system-wide value. Okay, it's tied to the system. It's tied to the people that operate inside the system. Um, custom fields are tied to the contact. Okay, so first name, last name, birthday, those are custom fields that the contact are going to fill out. Custom values are going to be system-wide functions. Now, in this particular use case, Martin, we're building out a system that is for your client. Okay. Yeah. So in a lot of instances, when you're doing it for a specific client and you're building out a custom snapshot, custom values are not really required um, with the exception of a couple of things. Maybe um, you can literally just use the business profile information. So you can use business email as the notification. You can use business phone number as the notification. Um, but when you're building out a snapshot that you're going to replicate and use over and over and over again for all different clients, then you're going to want to use custom values for that kind of stuff. Um, and especially if you want to go down the line of like completely customizing landing pages, like all of our estimator tools, landing pages are built on custom values. So colors, logos, reviews, like all of those things are put into custom values so that when they're inputted, it changes their entire page because it's a system-wide value. Um, I don't think we need to put much in here. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one sneaky one. We're gonna do client Twilio number. This one was in. This one was in the default um, snapshot, and I'm gonna show you why. Now, this is kind of. Do they want to do call tracking? Do they want to know if somebody clicked the call button on their website or on Google? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, then I don't care about this one. Um, for those of you that might care about this one, what I do with this is I put the client's Twilio number in here as a, a you know, in North America, it's plus one. Um, but you would put in their area code and then their phone number in, a, in just a single string. And then if you display the client's phone number on a funnel, so if you've got a, a call now button, you would actually display your client's location phone number on that button, but then have a click to call link to the client's Twilio number because then you can track it. The call actually gets generated through the system to your client's phone number. And it tracks that number. Whereas if you just have a click to call that goes directly to your client, you can't track whether or not that button and that phone call was actually generated from your own marketing efforts. So that's one of the reasons that wh why I would use the client's Twilio number. Now, in your specific use case and for the sake of time, unless I run into a position where we need a custom value, I'll come back and create them. But in this case, we can basically use most of the profile information or the user information. Um, do you have any staff put in here yet? Like, are there any users created? I don't believe so. She's doing, she's done quite a lot what I saw last night, but uh, I don't think she's added her staff in yet. Oh. Okay, well, this is enough to get me going. At least we've got a couple different users. Yeah. Um, so there's the owner, there's you, and then there's her, the owner's personal address and then i'm not sure who the other person is but okay. i think that's the receptionist this one this one here yeah. or this one here no uh, the top one alicia i'm gonna give her a name 
I'm going to assume that it's Alicia because of her email. Yeah. I think she's the one doing all the admin for them. Okay, I think that's right. Click save. All right, she's got a name. Um, I wanted to do that because of when we do the workflows, we're going to set them up with names. Okay, um, I said we needed three assets. Uh, we have the calendar. We have the calendar booking form. Oh, shoot. <laughs> calendar booking form. We didn't do that. I got here and I got distracted. Uh, let's edit that. Let's go to the confirmation and custom form. I didn't name it. That was dumb of me. I'm assuming it's form two because it was the last one created. Let's go and rename that form sites forms. Form two. Form two is nothing. There we go. So this form is the um, women over 40 form. Now we'll go back and we'll make that the form. Just going to delete the form two for now. We do need to create another one, but that's okay. We will. I'm sure it'll delete eventually. Um, calendars. Come on, high level. Keep chugging. Sometimes it helps to just jump out of something and then jump back into it. Or there you go. Okay, so we're going to edit this again and we're just going to add that custom form for that. So now they're going to ask for their birthday on the phone. Perfect. Okay. Um, we're going to create another form. And we're going to create this form to just say full name and email. Okay. All we need in order to tie any sort of form fill to a user is their email or their phone number. If you put one of those two fields in, it will link that form fill to that contact. Okay, so if they put in a different email, that's gonna create a new contact, which sucks, but for the most part, people don't do that. Um, we're gonna do required fields for both, and we're also going to add a button. Um, sign in, center it, and I like full width. Is it, do they have a brand color? Uh, yeah. It's like yeah. that green, that green color, right? This color here. Yeah. Do you have anywhere other than the text? Cause I got to try to grab that color. Yeah. So if you go to the, um, uh, can I send you the link in this, uh, is there a chat in here that I can send it to? Uh, if you just send it, there is a private chat inside StreamYard. Yes. But e even if you just went to, to uh, BFT, if you search, search BFT in, um, Google. Fitness, either one of them. Yeah, and you just click on click on any of those. So it's a franchise. So Okay, so it's all the same color. Yeah, yeah. So guys, this color picker Chrome extension is the bomb. Um doesn't always work, but there you go. I just copied the color. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste it in here. Make sure you delete the hash because it is going to download it. There you go. Um, and then if we're looking at their brand, none of these are, none of those have um, angles or anything to them. So we're just going to leave it square as is to kind of match their brand. Yeah. And we'll maybe make the font size a little bit bigger. And they got a, they got like a font that they need to use Roboto uh, condensed. We cannot use condensed. 
Okay, then well, I, I guess we'll just use what what what's a, the closest to it. Just Roboto, yeah. standard. Okay, here's asset number two. Um, let's give this one a name, and this is the sign-in form. Okay, so what I've done in the past for another gym is they have a QR code scanner to sign in. And that QR code scanner just goes to a simple funnel page with a sign-in form on it. So they would just literally scan that, fill in that form and sign in, and then it tells you that they signed in. Yeah. Okay? So that's what, that's what this asset here is for. Um, in this case, we will just go message and say, thank you for signing in. Enjoy your session. And then we'll just make this font size a little bit bigger. And what will that do inside the system, Adam? What will the message do inside the system? Oh, no. So, so you're saying like if they came for a session and they used the QR code to sign in. So that's what we're going to build inside the workflow. So remember right. in the customer journey. Yeah. First session showed. Yeah. So that's going to be, if they fill out that form, they're going to move over to first session. For, huh, that's a Got mouthful. It. First session showed. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we've got all of our assets. We've got your funnel. We've got the um, opt-in form or the booking form on the funnel. We've got a first session showed form. And that is all we need. All right. Now we're going to get into the fun bits, which is the workflows. So I like to keep everything neat and tidy. Um, and it's, and that's a kind of another reason why I do different services, different products, different things in different pipelines. Um, the customer journey might be the same, but the thing that you're selling is different. And so we may have to have a different route to get there. Um, in your case, different calendar to get there. Um, but when you separate the pipelines, it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you kind of make things talk to each other. Um, in this case, we're just going to start with the first one. We're going to create a folder for it. And I always just name it what the pipeline is. Women over 40. Um, good enough for me. Now I'm going to duplicate this tab here. Handy feature, guys. Duplicating is a wonderful thing. Um, I'm going to go into it here, and then I'm going to go over to your pipeline here. Okay, so we've got a new lead opt-in. Um, and really, we should talk about creating another opt-in asset, right? Another opt-in form, so that if you wanted to have an opt-in funnel page where people can put their name, email, phone number to get a thing, um, we would want an opt-in form on that funnel as well which would also then put them into here. So why don't we go do that? Let's go and create a form for that. And this form, we're just going to call the women under 40 or women over 40. Opt-in. And we'll go and add name, email, phone number. Make them all required. And of course, add that button again. The font is Roboto and we made it, I think 20 something, 25. Okay, so we've got that form. That's one way that people are going to get into our first workflow. And the other way that people are going to get into our first workflow is Facebook. Um, if you're running Do Facebook we need ads. To change the name of the button. Oh, yep. Good call. Good catch. Opt in. Button. That'd be a good opt in for you guys signing up or. 
Yeah, that's good. Okay. And do we want to add in then the uh, the date of birth there as well? Uh, yeah, we totally can. And again, we'll just leave that optional. Yeah. Now, another thing that you could do here is like you could add a text box here um, just to give them a reason, like to get promotional discounts and swag on your birthday, enter your birthday here. Yeah. Right. right yeah. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to write this and I'm going to let you fill that out later. Yeah. Don't forget about that though. No, I won't. Don't, don't forget about it. Cause you'll look pretty silly when you put this on your client's website and they're like, what do you mean? Offer here. All right. Here we go. Women over 40. Now, the naming conventions that I'm going to go with here are, I've just developed them through five, well, four years of trying to figure out other people's stuff. Um, and it just being a complete and utter mess. Um, whenever I've bought snapshots, everybody's like, oh, I've got all these things. I've got, I've got a folder here. It's got all these fancy workflows. And you're like, great. Which workflow does what? And what's the order of operations here? And so I like to keep these things super, super organized, which is why I created the naming convention that I have now um, and I do for everything. So first things first, your folder and your pipeline is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? However many you decide to make. In your first pipeline, now I start to name these alphabetically with numbers. Um, and the reason that I do this is because A stands for first pipeline, right? It's the first letter of the alphabet. It's the first pipeline. Um, and then I do zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero means starting point. That's where they first came in. And the reason that I do three zeros and then I'll do zero, zero, one, and then zero, zero, two is because if you do A, zero, one, and then you get up to A10. Well, A10 will show up before A1 when it organizes itself alphabetically. So I've just found that this naming convention works really, really well to keep everything clean and to keep everything organized. And this is really, really important when you're doing SaaS and you're giving clients access to the workflows to see what you're doing and how things are operating because they will be able to fully understand what's going where, right? Everything is just super clear, super organized, um, and it's very, very easy to follow. So that's what we're going to do. The first stage in the pipeline is what? New lead. And what's the purpose of a pipeline? Customer journey. Correct. So we are going to start with the starting point of a customer journey. Okay. So we're going to start from scratch. This one is going to be A000, new lead. Okay. Uh, new lead slash opt-in. And our triggers to get a new lead are going to be Facebook, lead form submitted. Now, do you know about uh, Facebook form field mapping, Martin? No. Okay. Is their Facebook page connected to this at all? Uh, it is now, yeah. Okay. Do you know if they've ever run lead form ads before? I reckon they have, but I'm not sure. Okay. So if you just put Facebook lead form submitted as the trigger, this workflow is going to fire every time a Facebook lead form gets submitted that is mapped. Okay. So once we go into the mapping, that will make sense. So if you have different offers, if you have different pipelines, if you have different, anything different, you need to then narrow this down even further to a specific form. Now they probably won't, there you go. So they do have some. So again, I just wanna make it clear. If you just leave this trigger like this and you hit the save button, every single lead form that they have inside their business account is going to enter this workflow. 
when it gets submitted inside their Facebook business account. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Um, so if you're running a specific promotion for women over 40, you want to have an ad and an ad and the lead form that is specific to the women over 40. And then you want to come in here and you want to filter it down so that that's the form that we're triggering off of. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. So basically, so they would then, in, they would know, obviously they know how to do these, these lead forms. So, so because they're already running these ads, should that, should that thing, should that be in here now? I, I would talk to them. Yeah. Cause here's the thing. When you, when you create a lead form on Facebook, you can never uncreate that lead form. You can never delete it. So all of their lead forms will be available to you in here. Like you'll yeah. be able to see every single lead form that they've ever created once their Facebook profile is linked. So you're going to need to know exactly which ones they're running and which ones they aren't. Yeah. And then show them if they're going to be managing this system by themselves, you need to show them you need to add your specific lead form here in order to, for this to fire and operate properly. Okay. So I just asked them when I see them next time, I just ask them which one of their lead forms they want to use for this particular promo. Okay. And then I'll add that in. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll show you another trick in just a second. The second trigger to get somebody in here is a form fill form submitted. And that form is the opt-in form women over 40 opt-in. So I like to always name this so I know exactly what it is. Women over 40 opt-in is the second trigger. Okay. Um, yeah. Now this is the part where we fly. I like to use tags so that I know exactly where things are and exactly what stage of the pipeline they're in. And again, I like to do this and keep it super, super clean. So this we're going to tag first. And we're going to tag it new lead or new lead slash opt-in. Add that tag. And then again, I like to name them in here with quotes, new lead slash opt-in. Again, this is just so that people can come in here and know exactly what's going on, right? Um, new lead slash opt-in. Now, because they might be running different promotions, um, eventually what you're going to want to do is learn about if statements and we'll have an if statement in here in this particular use case we're not going to worry about that we're just going to assume that they're running this one campaign and that's all we're doing um, so now we're going to update the pipeline stage update opportunity in the women over 40 new lead opt-in and then we're going to give it a name of contact dot name Okay, that's going to just say first name. So in this case, it would be Adam McInnes, although I am not a woman over 40, so I wouldn't be opting into this, but that's what this would say. Um, and then you can just leave the rest of this stuff blank. Now, once you've created a opportunity card in a pipeline, you will never have to do this again because that's going to follow that card. The only time that you're ever going to want to change this is if you want specific detail from another action that they've taken. So one of the things that I'll sometimes do here is an appointment booked, display the contact's name and the date and time of the appointment in their opportunity card. So just so you know, um, we'll hit save and let's go create opportunity. Let's label this so we know what it is. I do zero women or zero. So pipeline zero is what this would be. And then women and new lead opt-in that's just telling you what where are you creating that opportunity so if you have another pipeline that's men over 40 that's going to be pipeline one new lead um, all right we don't have the next workflows here but we're going to build them um, typically well we'll just do it this way anyways so now we're going to start with your text messages um, do you remember, would it be this one? Thanks so much for inquiring about our studio. I just tried to call you. So is this the one, is this the one that will go out after they've opted in? 
whether they've opted in on a Facebook form or a opt-in form on the funnel. For this particular for this particular promotion, right? Correct. And so that would have been it they would have gone to the first page of the funnel and they will have booked in on the calendar. The so this is actually this is actually before that point. Um, this is if they're running Facebook ads to yeah. lead forms or they are running it to a funnel that has an opt-in page. Okay. All right. So I think, so the way that we've discussed it so far is that we just like, they click the link and they go straight to that, the, the, the booking page on the funnel that has that additional information I've been trying to put in. Okay. Then let's, uh, let's leave this for now. I'm going to leave it drafted. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm trying to make your life easier for the time when they actually do start running ads. Yeah. Um, so the other workflow that I'm going to create here is actually the, I call them the initiate, it's the initiate contact workflow. So this is going to be A001, initiate contact. And again, this assumes that they have never talked to you before. They haven't booked an appointment. They just opted in from a lead form. Yeah. Okay. So now this is the workflow sequence that's going to try to get them to book an appointment or try to get them to respond, try to get them to put their hand up and say, yes, I'm interested something along those lines, right? So this is the yeah. first workflow where we're going to do that. Um, typically, I do a 35-day, just almost back-to-back -back as I kind of stretch out the days in between as it gets further down the line. But for the first seven days, I'm tr I'm emailing them, I'm texting them, I'm calling them. And you can do all of that inside the workflow. Um, so again, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to leave it unpublished. And then I'm going to do a... So that's... Workflow one and two are basically this. Okay. So we're just organizing our leads, getting them in the right pipelines when they come in. And then we're sending them the right messages according to that specific pipeline. Um, now what happens with pipe stage two, right? Stage two is they responded. So now what we want to do is we want to do a, a 003 responded. And the trigger for this one is going to be a customer replied to customer replied. And we're going to narrow this one down to replied to workflow. And in this case, it's initiate contact because actually a new lead opt-in, that's just our organizational structure, right? That's just where we're telling it which pipeline to go to, what tags to add to it, all of that sort of stuff. It's the initiate contact in this pipeline that we're actually wanting to trigger this off of. So we're going to go customer replied to, and then I go A001, GA contact. Now in here, we're going to update opportunity again. Um, I always just do that. Update opportunity, zero responded. In pipeline, women over 40 responded. We don't need to change anything here because we've already set that up um, in the first step there. And we're going to hit save. Then we are going to remove a tag, new lead, opt in, because they've now taken the next step. And this way we can organize them with smart lists later on down the road. Say, hey, which are all of our new leads that haven't responded? Who are all of our leads that have responded? And so on and so forth. So I always remove and add tags as they run through the pipeline. That makes sense? Yeah. And this just keeps it super, super clean for both you and your client. Um, so we're going to now add a tag and we're going to add the tag responded. Again, that's so that we know exactly where in the pipeline they are living. Okay. And then here you're going to want to do an internal notification. Um, now notification, do you know what the difference is between these? Uh, no, not a hundred percent. Okay. So an email is an email. An SMS is an SMS. A notification is a high level notification. So if they have the lead connector app, they're going to get a bading on their phone and it's going to say you have a new notification, what it is and where it's going to go. Um, if it's just an email, it's an email. Um, and so then you need to specify who it's going to, which also reminds me that I forgot a step in the first one. Um, but we'll do that anyways. 
So you're going to want to set up a notification. Um, lead responded. And then I just put the contact name. If you're not sure what these are, you can click this little tag over here and you can find all the valid, all the fields that you need to know. And then contact.name. Responded. Please reach out right away. And then you have to say, where do you want to redirect it to? So the contact, the conversation, or the opportunity card. So I would always, if they replied, I would always just send them to, right to the contact card. Um, yep. And then we're going to go to assigned, user assigned to contact. This is the part that I missed on the first one. So let's go back to that. So again, this is the organization structure. So now we're going to assign to user. Now you said, hey, what if I want to do this person for the first five, this person for the second five, this person for the third five, right? So let's do um, Alicia and Tash. You can split traffic equally, which is a one-to-one -one scenario. So first lead, second lead, first lead, second lead, right? Yeah. Or you can split, split them unevenly. Now this one is literally going to go in this order, like you said, right? First five, second five. Okay. Now, yeah. if Alicia is the best closer on the team, maybe you want to give her the first the first five and you want to give Tasha the next three. But you want the bulk of the leads going to Alicia because yeah. she, because she's the best. Right? That so that's how you would do that. Okay. Okay. Um now apply only to unassigned contacts. Um if you turn this on, this will only happen if the contact doesn't already have an assigned owner. Yes. Okay. Um, doesn't really make sense here because this is a brand new lead. It's never been in the system before. So it, it's not going to be assigned to anybody anyways. Yeah. So we're just going to assign to user. I'm going to label this um, round robin because that's essentially what we're doing. There we go. All right, again, I'm not gonna leave that published because we don't need it. New lead and then responded. And what is the next step in our customer journey? It is the next step would be booked appointment. So this is where we're going to start to do what you need. <laughs> <clears throat> Create workflow. Now you can use the recipes if you want to. Um, they're pretty good, but I always end up changing them. Uh, what would you like to do? Do you want to use one of the pre-built booking flows or do you want to create your own? Based on time, you pick what whatever is easier for you. I, I have been playing around with the those ones. Um, if it's easy for you to build it out, then we just do that. Booked appointment. And we're going to do a... In this case, it's customer booked appointment because you're doing it directly from a funnel. We're going to specify the calendar. Um, I'm going to just label this for the calendar that it's in. And here's another very important thing to notice or to note. Um, if I just put this right here in this workflow is going to fire on any calendar action at all. Now, because we have auto confirm appointment on, that's fine. Um, but there's a couple of different, um, okay. This isn't the right trigger for that. This is the one I'm talking about appointment status. So event type normal in calendar female over 40 um, appointment status is so there's a couple of different appointment status fields right you've got new confirmed canceled showed no showed invalid that other one doesn't matter what the appointment status was this workflow would fire but we actually want to specifically say that it, this is a, this is a confirmed appointment 
this particular workflow. So in this calendar, appointment is confirmed. That's the trigger. And that's once they have put in their date and time and they've clicked confirm and they've filled in their details. That you betcha. It becomes a confirmed one. Yeah. Correct. Um, so now you're going to have your first email that goes out. Let's organize ourselves first here. Remove tag. What was the last tag that they would have had? Uh, responded. Yeah. We're also going to delete the other tag just in case. Um, it's a little bit crazy the longer the longer your pipelines and things are. But again, I do this because I want it to be clean. If it's not clean, your clients don't understand it. You don't understand it. And no, and then you're not going to have a sticky clients, right? And we all want sticky clients that are going to stick around. So we need to make it easy. We need to make it simple. We need to make it make sense. And then we're going to add a tag. Appointment booked. Good. I always periodically save my workflows because I'm always terrified that something's going to freeze and break and then I'm going to lose all the work that I just did. So if you ever see me just constantly going to save, that's why. Uh, Brendan makes fun of me for it all the time, but he doesn't, he, he, he loses stuff. I don't. Um, okay. Opportunity update in the pipeline. Appointment booked. Now, again, here's where I might put the appointment booked date and time, right? So I might come in here and I might actually change this now. Contact name dash, and then I'm gonna come in here, grab appointment, start date time. So this is gonna say Adam McInnes, um, Sunday, March, whatever at 1 p.m. is the time that I booked in for. Would you like to do that? Or do you wanna leave it just simple? Yeah, no, that's, that's good. They'll, they'll appreciate that. Awesome. Okay, now, this right here is important for this stage and this stage only, okay? Well, I, I should say this stage and subsequent stages moving forward. Um, what happens if the appointment never shows up? What if they don't come to their meeting? Or what if they don't sign in? We want to allow this to move them backwards into the pipeline. So we need... We need to move this backwards. So that's why I was saying when you create the pipeline, there's two ways to do it, right? Um, if you don't do this, you have to have your no-show as the next step in the pipeline versus the previous step in the pipeline. So I just do it this way because it makes logical sense to me, right? That if they didn't show up, they're actually further back in the pipeline than they were originally. Um, okay, so we're going to turn that on and allow them to move to a previous stage in the pipeline. Let's make sure we name this. And let's go pipeline zero so we know which one it is. Yep. All right. Now we're going to start with our confirmation email. So we're going to do an email. And we're going to just name this one. You can do this if you like to. I like to create templates for all of my clients so that they can change the messages but keep them in order. Um, versus having to go into the workflow and change the messages. So what I typically do here is I'll do the way that I'll name these is like um, book BA for booked appointment or badass. BA, A1, email, one dash confirmation. So I name them like this so that if I go back to templates and I, I will name the template itself exactly the same as this specific email, and the specific text I write and the specific second email and all of that sort of stuff so that the client can easily go into templates and be like, oh, it's the, the booked appointment confirmation email. We need to change that. So they know BA, day one, email one, confirmation. So, I mean, you could even get more granular, right? Booked appointment, day one, email one, confirmation. 
So I name them like this just so that it's a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, from name. So this is where custom values, if we were to use it, would make the most sense. Um, but in this case, we're going to do user information. So user.name. So this is going to come from whichever user the lead was assigned to in the first place. Um, and then you're going to do user.email as well. Okay. Um, do we have an email for? Yeah, it will. It will be just the everything will go out from one email, which is the uh, it's bundle at bodyfittraining.com. Okay, good to know. Then we're going to do this. We're going to create a custom value. Um, client email address. What was the email? Uh, bundle b u n d a w -L, l at bodyfittraining.com like that yeah okay. um who do we want the like the name to be just bft bundle is good yeah. to go out like that yeah. or do you want yeah. okay yeah bft bundle is good perfect okay so because i just added that i'm just going to put this here and I'm going to put this here and I'm going to save. I'm going to save and I'm going to refresh because if I don't, it's not going to know that we created them. And now we're going to come in here. So the from name, we can literally just make location. Which name. And the from email, we're going to use that custom value. So custom value client email. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Session confirmed. A contact dot first underscore name. We don't need to use the full name here. Your session has been confirmed for custom values appointment. Uh, let's do day of the week, which is going to say the actual day. So Thursday or Friday for Thursday at Appointment start time at 1 p.m. That's how that's going to read right there. Um, your session has been confirmed for Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, is there an a.m. p.m.? I can't remember. No, I don't think so. I think it just happens by default. Uh, do you want user dot name here, or do you want the location name? Uh, just probably just the location name. Now, in the user in the in the account settings, so that again you can go in and change all of this stuff later. But we'll set the framework up for you. Um, in account settings, business profile, you've got your unsubscribe link automatically turned on. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to end up on all of the emails that get sent. Okay. So you yeah. don't have to worry about an unsubscribe. Um, if you don't have this on, you do have to create your own unsubscribe. Okay. So we're going to do an email. Let's do a text. And basically I'm just going to say the same thing. And again, I'm going to name this the same, right? So books, appointment, A1, uh, SMS1. Information. So that if you ever want to turn these into templates again, we know exactly where they are. Um, actually, one thing that I do want to see, I want to try to recall the account full address. Okay, location dot address. Probably a good thing to tell them. Let's add that to the email.
This is the boring stuff, guys. Sorry. You're just going to have to sit through it. But this is like, this is where. This is where the magic happens. Yeah. 100. Like, this is the. To me, it's the exciting part because that's what makes it easy for the clients, right? So that makes them sticky. They'll Where are yeah. they going to go and get this done somewhere else? Okay. How often do you want an appointment reminder to go out? So I don't know if there's any standard, but I've seen a lot of people do it two days before. I just reckon like one day before, like there should be, hey, we it's going to be 24 hours before and maybe like four hours before. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go wait for event appointment time in this case before one day. Now, this is the answer to your question of what happens if they book after the four hour time period. So if you skip all outbound communication actions till the next event wait date. So this will just skip over this message. Yeah. Or it'll skip to this message or pass this message if the time is in the past. So if they book like 10 hours before and we had like a one day before and a four hours before, they'll only get the four hour before. You got it. They'll, yeah, get, the, they'll get the confirmation. They'll get the yeah. first one that we just created. Yeah. And then it'll skip all the rest and go to the four hour one right away. Whichever one is the next one that is relevant. You got it. Perfect. So now this is a 24 hour reminder. So we're just going to do a 24 hour location dot name. And the from email again is going to be the custom value. Now here is a hack for you. You don't have to do this on every single email that you want to write. Um, I'm just going to finish writing this. Session reminder for day of the week. Or 24 hour, 24 hour session reminder for Thursday or something like that. You can change that up. I'm just going to put this here. Okay. So let's make our lives easier so that we don't have to enter that name and email and every single name and email that goes out. Uh, we're going to go into settings and we're going to put them right here. So location dot name and then use that custom value email right there. Um, we're going to allow multiple because people are going to book multiple times, most likely. Um, and then we do not want stop on response turned on because we want them to get those notifications no matter what. Um, I also like to turn that on because it's annoying when you have a bunch of conversations that are just nurture emails that show up in the conversations thread. So let's go ahead and save all that. So by doing that, I now don't have to have these in here. Okay, so I can just write all of my emails now and that's who it's going to come from. So they don't auto populate if you put it in the settings. You got to know that you put it in the settings. It does auto populate with something. I just don't know exactly what. It's probably the location name and the location email, uh, but I've never not done it. So I don't know what the actual outcome is. Yeah. No, um, just, I'm just thinking like if you set it up and then by some, some chance, like a, a client goes in there and they see, oh, there's no, we haven't filled this in. If they then added it in there, would it then come twice or would it just override one or the other? Do you know? Sorry, say that again. So if, if over at, so you put it in settings now, so you don't have to put them in and that way the fields are going to be left empty. Is that correct? They, so in yeah. settings, you just put, in settings, you just added them in as as preset values. Yeah. Yeah. And then so when you now over on your right hand side here, where it says from email, you, you took them out. You say we don't need to have them in here anymore. Correct. I could take them out of here because the location name is the default name for this entire workflow structure for emails. And then yeah. the custom value email is the default email for all of the emails in this workflow structure now. Correct. Yeah. So, so you just have to know that it has been done in settings and yeah. therefore we don't need to do it over on the right hand side. Correct. Got it. And, but that's purely from, that's only from the workflow we're working on right now. Correct. You'll yeah. have to do that at every workflow that you're sending an email from. Got it. Okay. 
Um, okay, so this is a you know, hey contact dot first underscore name. We're looking forward to meeting you tomorrow for your little workout. For your first session. For your first session. And we can go in and we can go in and add to these as well, Adam. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's just on contact. Just that you just gotta rewind, uh, remove the O. Remove the A. Uh, the A. <laughs> Yeah, you can come in here and, and tweak these a little bit further. Yeah, right. That's perfect. Uh, that's a mess again. And we're going to do SMS two for hour. It does make so much more sense when you actually see it being built, Adam. Good. That's the that's the purpose. So so it's it's really valuable because it just I think you're trying to learn a little bit and a little bit, but seeing the whole thing build out, it actually like it's just it's invaluable actually. So really appreciate it, babe. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, so we're gonna 24 hour. Now we're gonna do here's what I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna make this a little bit easier on myself. I'm gonna copy everything from here because i'm going to repeat this action again just change it but this time we're going to wait before four hours before four hours Again, make sure that that's set up right there and this is going to be email three four hour and four hour session reminder for today Right now, today. And so you're building this, all of this in the same workflow? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so it's it's just keeping track of everything that's happening in order, right? Yeah. Um, and so we're going to do a really cool little ninja hack um, at the end of this workflow, which I probably wouldn't do in most appointment reminder workflows, but because of what you guys are doing with the gyms, um, I think this will be really cool and you can. Delete it if you want to, but I'm going to show you how to do some cool stuff. See you in four hours. And go ahead and change all of this stuff if yeah. you want. Yeah. I'm just going to literally copy that, paste it here. And that is four hours. SMS three, 44 hours. Okay, here's the ninja hack. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm one step ahead of you already. Um, if they show up, they're going to scan a QR code and they're going to sign in, right? Yeah. So this is a four-hour reminder. We're not going to hit them up again. So now we're going to do another wait step. And we're actually going to wait for – we're going to wait till one hour after the event. So it will be when the session is finished. Actually, let's do, let's do this. Let's go wait for a condition. And the condition is going to be based on a contact tag. And we're going to see, does the tag include, uh, what was that pipeline stage that we called it? We called it first session, first session showed. So we're going to literally tag this first session showed. Oh, for the love. First session showed, add tag. Um, we're going to time this out f after, ooh, you know what? I got to add a step here. 
but we will do this. Time is out after one hour for first session tag. Okay, so what I want to do here is I actually want to wait again. So this again, this I'm just kind of trying to do some ninja stuff here. We're going to wait for, how do I want to do this? Wait for time. And we're just going to wait for one minute. One minute before the appointment. We're not going to send them anything. All we're doing is we're making sure that this fires in the right time progression. So they get these notifications four hours before. This is one minute before their appointment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this tag to show up. We're going to wait an hour. And if that tag does not show up, so we're going to create an if statement. Um, did they show? This one is going to be yes. Contact details. Tag includes first session showed. Now we're going to update the pipeline stage. To appointment first session showed. Now, because we had their first session date and time on the last opportunity up at the top here, I am going to swap this back to just their name so that we don't have their time displayed for the rest of forever. Um, unless you think they want to. Would they want to know the time of their first session? No, probably not. Okay, so we're going to get rid of it. Um, we're not going to allow it to move backwards, and we're not going to allow duplicate convert content. Blech. We're going to just go zero. Showed. What I'm trying to do here, do you kind of, do you, are you starting to see the logic that I'm trying to use here? Yeah. So, because the next workflow is the next stage in the pipeline, which is that they filled out that form and they are showed. So we're going to add a tag there and it's going to automatically move them. Now we can even actually just delete this and do this opportunity in the next stage. Um, and then they'll just get removed from this workflow. If they did show up, if they didn't show up, we're going to update the opportunity. So if that tag never gets added, that form never got filled out, the tag never got added, we're going to just naturally assume that they didn't show up. And this is this is uh, based on that the QR code that that then links to that other form that we created. You got it. So that's that's going to be our next workflow, right? Our next yeah. workflow is going to be they filled this form out because they signed in. Yeah. Therefore, we know they showed up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so appointment, no show. We don't have to change this, but we do have to, again, allow the opportunity to move to a previous stage. Uh, let's update here. Zero, no show. This one I'm going to publish because now you can test it. Um, does that make sense? Does that, is that something that you want to include here? Yeah. So the, uh, I think it's just to wait one minute before I didn't quite understand that part, but everything else makes sense. I wanted to wait cause this, this section right here is happening four hours before the appointment. Yeah. So I guess it, it wouldn't matter. I, it, basically, if I didn't have this wait step here to wait one minute before the appointment time, then I would have to make this wait step, this timeout five hours. Oh, okay, got it. So that's an hour after the appointment time. So all I'm doing is just adding a progression, right? So wait till it's one minute before the appointment time and then wait yeah. an hour. Yeah, yeah, got to it. see if that tag okay. gets added. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Now, each session is an hour. So the thought process here is that, okay, they've already, they've signed up before yes. they started their session, right? They logged yeah. in before their session. Yeah. Now we can also do some other cool things here. 
Um, if that tag gets added, then we can also uh, update the appointment. Update appointment status to showed. And then they can start to track how many of their people that they're booking are actually showing up in reporting. Yeah. Okay. And they're like, they're, they're very much into their KPIs and stuff like and uh, reporting and all of that. So any anything like that will be valuable to them. We're just going to copy that action over and then this is going to be the opposite, right? Yeah. Oh, that's not what I want. No showed. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Totally. And we had already added in a step that based on that, they will go to a certain to the next step in the pipeline, whether it's backwards or forward. So that's what that's what this right Thing here is essentially yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, now this this session, like this one right here, we could do in the next workflow as well. Um and not have it in this one. So basically, why don't we go into there? So we'll consider this one kind of done-ish. Yeah. And now we're going to go to the next one. Um, however, the next one should actually technically be, so I do like an A004.5. <laughs> this is just my weird naming conventions that I like to do. And that would be a an appointment no-show. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so... There's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can add the trigger to be that an appointment status is no show. Yeah. And then it'll fire this workflow or we can add them to this workflow from the other workflow after they've gone down that route of they didn't show up. So there's always a thousand different ways that you can kind of make this work. Um, so let's go, let's make this a 004.5 um, no show or cancellation, right? Cause they can cancel too. Yeah. Um, and we can set the trigger to appointment status and type normal. Appointment status is no show. And we want to make sure that it's in calendar, that one. There's trigger number one. Trigger number two is going to be appointment status canceled. So there are going to be two different triggers in this workflow here. Is canceled in calendar. This one. I'm going to start this one. Quick, quick thing. If you're ever going to do an if statement in a workflow and you add your trigger and it's going to be based off of triggers, you need to add your triggers and then save the workflow. Okay, if you don't save the workflow, you can't if statement off of your triggers, your trigger events. So we're going to do an if statement here. And we're going to base it off of what was it a no show or was it a cancellation? Because you're going to want to send different messaging based on whether they no showed or they canceled, right? Yeah. Um, so we're going to do no show on this side. And you're going to do workflow trigger is appointment no show and you're going to add a branch and this one's going to be canceled a workflow trigger is canceled okay what i want to do before this is i want to remove the tags the relevant tags which is the appointment book tag because they didn't show up so we're going to delete that tag and we're going to now add a new one We're going to add the tag down here, depending on what they did. Anybody that's uh, still watching, are you guys finding this stuff valuable? Do you want to see more stuff like this? 
let me know because we want to be giving you guys the content that's actually going to help you guys grow your agencies. Appointment canceled. Everybody's quiet. They're probably half asleep at their computers. Like I said, this is the boring stuff, but this is the exciting stuff. This is where all the magic happens. Um, I'm not going to build out the email sequence or the text sequence here because I think that you probably understand that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. all good, mate. Cool. So let's go to the next one, which is A005. Notice how my naming convention keeps everything nice, nicely in order? Yeah. That's why I do it. A005, and this is first session showed. And this is effectively a nurturing campaign, right? Yeah. So this is going to be form filled, right? So form submitted. And the form is the sign in form. one thing that you could do is on their um like with their qr code you could have like a, a couple buttons like which session are you here for okay. and then you can it, based on which button they select um you could actually then tag them okay right? and how do you actually link that qr code to that form we created there's a couple of ways that you can do it um you do need to put the form on a funnel first Okay. Okay. Um, and then there's lots of different QR code creator free and paid versions of them. And so then you just take the URL for that funnel that you put that form on. Yeah. You create a QR code based on that and then you can print it on a flyer or have it on an iPad or something. Right. Okay. Um, or even, or even have the sign in form on the iPad, just like an open web browser. Yeah. Um, and then they can come in and fill it in. Oh, so good idea. first session sign in. We are going to remove tag again. And we're going to remove appointment booked. We are going to add tag. Can you guess? Sorry, mate, I was just making a note. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we are here first, it's showed. What is that tag going to do? So that is going to take them to the next step in the pipeline. Why? Because that's part of the customer journey. But where did we already configure that? Oh, sorry. So we, so we had it, um, let's see. So we had it in booked appointment. We did the workflow. And then they showed, and then now we are tagging them. So the booked first session showed, and then then we are creating, then we are creating messages to um, to know. So they showed, but we need to them to sign up. So they fill up here. Let's. I just want to make sure that this is very, very clear as to what just yeah, happened yeah. here. So we're in the women over 40 still, right? Yeah. We've got um, this workflow. Yeah. Which is because they booked an appointment. We're going to go through this and we're going to take a look. We are waiting in this workflow yeah. for the tag that we just added in the next workflow to get added to the contact record. Yes, correct. Okay. Once that tag does get added in this workflow, yeah, that's going to trigger it to do one of these two things. Yes. Right? So it's either going to move it forward or it's going to move it backwards. Yeah. So now you could have you could have just ignored this this stuff here 
and put it here. Yeah. With the exception of the appointment, the appointment status, uh, because there yeah. is no appointment trigger here, which is why I did this in this workflow here. Because, yeah. because the appointment is the trigger, we yeah. can also adjust the appointment status here. Yes. So that's why I did it this way. Just wanted to clarify that. Oh, yeah. No, that makes sense. But this tag is forcing the other workflow to make a move or not yeah. make a move, right? Um, and so now you can start your nurture sequence, which I believe is a lot of this stuff, right? Yes, correct. So I'll leave this stuff to you. Yeah. Um, really, all you got to do is create your weight steps and things like that. And then just kind of keep on pushing it along. Just always try to think of like, what's the next step, right? And so what is- So basically, so we got now here, so this basically, so they check in and that has then, that moves back to like the end result of the previous workflow. And then if, if I want, and so in this workflow that you just shown down here that, that only had like with the tag, based on, on whether they check in on that form or not, then I can, could I then add to there and then first, first session showed and then I can do, so this is someone that have now showed up. What do we want to do with them moving forward? Okay, all right, we want to send them an email two hours after the session saying, thank you for coming. We want to send them a week later saying, that, you know, whatever it is that they want to do. Yeah. That, so we would just, that communication would be built out below this. Correct. Now, yeah. think logically here. In this workflow, we've already waited, waited up to an hour. If they put this tag in the minute they show up. Which they should, yeah. Which they should. It's going to go boom, down to here and into the next workflow. So this is this is all happening the hour that they show up. So at their yeah. appointment time. So if you want to send your first message two hours after, if you add a wait step here, right now, this is like, this is happening when they showed up. Yeah. So, so now you're going to want to wait two hours. And then. Do you mind if I just step in with a, a comment? Yeah. I'm just thinking, so because of what they want to do so and, and looking at the pipeline so we got booked appointment first session showed but then we also have the next step really for them is to get them signed up so so one of two things is going to happen yes they showed up but probably like the workflow that they want to set up is if, like after that did they actually sign up after that or did they not sign up Okay. Because if they signed up, they become a client, right? And then they build out whatever whatever the workflow is for a new client. Okay. Versus if they didn't sign up, they'll add them to some sort of nurture sequence that they would potentially use for um, uh, people, other people that are in their um, uh, database, or they build a specific uh, nurture flow for people specifically new clients coming in from their ads. Is that okay. correct? So why don't we do this? We're going to wait two hours after they showed up for their appointment, for their session. First thing that we're going to do is an internal notification. Um, update opportunity. Did they sign up? Right? Yeah. Please update the opportunity for contact.name. Did they sign up after their session? And I, we should put the contact's name here too. Update opportunity. Did they sign up? And then we're going to do the redirect page to the opportunity. So that they could just move it. Yeah. If they did. And then we're going to do a the assigned user for this contact. Okay. So they're going to get a notification inside the system 
as to whether or not, hey, did that person show up? Did they sign up? And then they, that's a manual action, right? Now we could yeah. do that if they were signing up with an order form from here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I, I, I know where you're going with that, but I don't, that's probably going to be like way too much, but I, I, I understand that. I think at the moment we'll just make something that is really functional for them, but with, with what we have to work with. Okay, cool. So you can then, I kind of, with, with this one, there's really not much that needs to happen apart from, you know, maybe waiting for a couple tags, right? Yeah. Did they sign up? Did they not sign up? Right. Wait for those tags. And then if they didn't sign up, you know, we'll remove like this, this workflow here doesn't really need to have any messaging going out. This no. is really just a notification factor to say like, Hey, what was the outcome of this, of this session for that person? Did they sign up or not? Internal, um, yeah. So one internal notification may not be enough. Right, you may need to annoy them, um, which you can do. As the person who's building this, you can annoy them so that they actually make sure that they go in and they do their thing. Yeah, um, you could even create a task for that specific user. Right. Yeah. Uh, did contact dot name sign up? Please update the opportunity card for contact that name and then what are the opportunity stages uh no sign up nurture to wow ah, what have i done command n instead of command v no sign up nurture or one. Assign two. Just do test for now. Do in right basically today. Yeah. And how does that show up then, Adam? When when it adds a task, does that is that a notification that they get or let me show you. Um, this is you, right? Yeah. Okay, before we do that, let's make sure that you're assigned to me, because otherwise oh no. Let's just do this to show you what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna change this to me. And I'm going to send you through this. Here's another thing. If you're ever building and testing workflows, always turn on allow multiple. Because without fail, there's going to be something that you missed or something that goes wrong or something that didn't work quite right. And you're going to have to do it again. So make sure that you allow multiple in this, like for whatever reason that test didn't run. There it is. So we got a wait step here happening. Uh, well, I don't want to sit here for two hours to see if this works. Do you know how to force it to go to the next step? No. Okay. The running man. All right. The running man will force it to the next step. So if I had... If I was logged into the Lead Connector app tied to your account, I would get a notification on my phone first and foremost. Yeah. But I will also have a notification in here. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know why I didn't. Oh, I have a task. The internal notification went to the assigned contact, which I was not. So I will have a task though. So if I go to the dashboard, I have this here. Okay. 
Um, but let's do this. Let's do this the right way. I'm going to go into your contact record here. And I'm going to assign you to me and I'm going to run that again. I'm going to show you what happens with the notifications. Uh, Amir, so you don't have to use an, an LC app to get the notifications, although I'm sure that's where the value is. Yeah, it's it's a lot more relevant, like prevalent on the mobile app than it is on the desktop app. Um, like the desktop app, I'll show you where it's going to end up. We're going to run the test again. And move you forward. All right. So if you've got like pop-up notifications and you're on desktop, it will show up here. It'll pop up and notify you that a thing happened inside your account. But here's the notification right here. If I click that, it's going to take me right to the opportunities and then go all high level on me and not load. Oh, you want to know why that didn't work? Because you don't have an opportunity. So there's no opportunity for me to get sent to but with the workflow that we've set up there will be an opportunity yeah and so it. it'll, it'll go directly to that opportunity and then they can just update the opportunity as needed and so that will come so that will pop up on their phone as a as a task and it will show in their dashboard as well yeah yeah, yeah you bet. perfect so it'll show in the dashboard as a task so there's my two tasks yeah. right and then once I do it, I can say that that task is complete. Those tasks are also assigned on the contact. Um, so if I was to go into the contact and look at you, you're going to have two completed tasks inside your contact card. Which they can kind of, they can actually do that all from the same, all from the same place. Um, and, it, and so let's say if there are like three team members in this gym and they all work off the same account, can they still can they still do things in there as different people? If they're all logged in under the same login, no. So um, so if you make so you make uh, let's say you make three staff members like uh, so at the moment uh, you're logged in right, but would you see this? You would see the same things as so. You, so whoever is using the system just needs to log in basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to do an assign to user here too. Yeah. This is with the appointment getting booked. Yeah. Because if that's the first step, we want to make sure that a user is getting assigned. Yes. So I'm just going to do that for now. Um, this is just going to be equal one, two, one, two, one, two. Um. And then we're good to go here. Now we can kind of repeat the process that we just created in the booked appointment workflow here, where we actually now wait for one or the other tags to get added. Because we want to keep on reminding them, hey, you this person showed up, but you haven't told the system what you want to do with it yet. So you want to keep on adding those reminders. Um, yeah. Maybe then go to an email and email the owner and say, hey, this opportunity has been sitting here for too long without being updated. Please let us know. Do we need to nurture this lead or do we need to, or, or do we need to close win this lead because they signed up? Right. Yeah. So I'll let you continue to build that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Mate. That's it's That's clever. Sweet. Now we're going to do zero zero six. And this is, what did we call it? Didn't sign up. No sign up nurture. Now, this one, it's a manual action, right? They have to physically move them over in order for this trigger to fire. So we're going to do a pipeline stage change as the trigger. Yeah. Okay. In pipeline, I'm in over 40. Pipeline stage, no sign up nurture. Pipeline zero, no sign up. That's the trigger that's going to get him in here. 
Yeah. I'm just going to call this one nurture. Spell it right. And label it. And what was the previous tags that we added? Do you see why it's super convenient to uh, have two tabs open? Yeah. Now, I might not actually do this because I think it's an important distinction to know that they did show up to their first session. Yeah. But they still didn't. So I'm actually not going to remove this tag. Because um, then you can see they're in the nurture sequence, but they actually showed up for a session. So you could, in if you have a list with all of those people that are showed but nurture, yeah, you do different messaging for them versus someone that is just like a previous member or whatever it could be. Yeah. I mean, in this particular case, most of them are going to be showed nurture anyways. So there's a, there's an argument to be made that you could do remove the tag and just leave nurture, but I still think I, it's I, a good distinction. I, I agree. I, I, I like keeping it there. Okay. So pipeline stage changed again. We don't now have to update the opportunity because they just did it manually, right? So there's no need to actually create that update opportunity in here. Correct. And I can um, then build out a workflow for them and just be like, hey, what do you want to happen with these ones? And I can then sit down and build it up step by step later yeah. on. And like basically here's your here's your workflow, right? Yeah. They've already they've already given you those messages. Yeah. So just gotta find out which one they wanna copy paste and send in there if they want to do it email, SMS, whatever. You bet. Okay, so let's do 007, which is the opposite. They they want it. Um, A007. This was... It was a signed up one. Signed up one. Well, that looks hideous, but it'll change. There we go. And again, we're going to do a pipeline stage changed. In pipeline, you you know what we're doing. Signed up one. Now, one thing I wish Go High Level had was I could update all or remove all and so on and so forth, but they don't. So pipeline stage changed, signed up. Or remove contact tag. We don't really care this time about the first session showed because we figured they probably already did. And we're going to update the opportunity this time, even though they manually updated it. But now we want to show that this opportunity is one. And we can change the status here to one. This is going to show on your dashboard one opportunities. So it'll show what's the percentage of leads that you brought in, what's the percentage of leads that you closed. That's going to, this is going to be what determines that number. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you know roughly how much, I think it's in the funnel. So they're worth $199, right? Yeah. Is that first session $199? No, that that's for the first four weeks. So the first session is free. Yeah. So they get them in, they get them in for the session. So instead of trying to sign them up on the 199 in, in the funnel, they, they just try it. They use the funnel to say, Hey, this is what we're doing at the moment. Come in, come in for your session. Them knowing that that is what they are promoting at the moment. And they'll come them in and they'll sign them up for the four week challenge in the studio rather than um, trying to do it in, uh, in, in the funnel. Got it. Okay, so if that's the case, I would change your funnel. Okay. Just, fr just from a 
marketing perspective and yeah. how you want to try to gather the leads. Yeah. I read this and I think I'm paying $199 for this. Got it. So I would talk about this. This is what the four week boot camp is, but the real offer is like come in for free, like get your first session for free, try it out. No obligation, no stress. Get in here today and give this a shot. You won't regret it. It's totally free. Like that's what you need to focus on. Get fit for free. Yeah. Is, is what you need this funnel to say. Okay. So, so get, I just, I guess if you say get fit for free, they'll be like, oh, what? It's free, Jim. I, I, I like what you were saying before, like come in for the first session and, and, and we'll show you how awesome it is. And then yeah. once you know how awesome it is, this is what, this is what you're going to sign up for. But get rid of this. Okay. Let, let them do the selling after the session. Your job is to get them in the door. Yeah. Your job is to get people into a sales position. Yeah. Right. As the marketer. Yeah. So, get rid of this because that's going to stop people dead in their tracks. Yeah. Whereas if they go there and they absolutely love it, well then all of a sudden 199 doesn't seem so bad. Correct. Right. So get rid of that in my opinion and really focus on the free session. Yeah. Like if you're sick and tired of being 40 and feeling old and crappy, like come and sign up for our first session. We promise you, you'll love it. Yeah. First session is totally free. And if after that first session you want to continue, here's what our four week training, here's what our four week boot camp looks like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's how I would, that's how I would structure this. Yeah. No, makes sense. Um, but yeah. Okay. So your one opportunity is one ninety nine. Yeah. So that's done. Let's publish that one. There's not really much that needs to go in there other than maybe a thank you message getting sent out. Uh, I'll leave this one in draft so that you can create yes. the, uh, the workflows. Yeah. First session showed. Uh, we'll turn this one on because this is just internal notifications and tasks. I would extend this one. So you add a couple more notifications. Um, yeah. Which then also leads me to this. I should add here no sign up. We're actually going to remove them from workflow. We're going to remove them from another workflow and we're going to remove them from this workflow. Do you know why? Why? So we're removing them from the workflow and that's part of no sign up. Um, so once they've actually physically moved it, we're going to remove them from the other workflow. Yes because the other workflow is going to continue to remind them to move it. Yeah. But if they have moved it and they're not removed from that workflow, they're going to be like, what the hell? I moved it. Why yeah, are you yeah. still annoying me? Of course. Right. So we're going to remove them from that workflow in this one and in a zero zero seven. We're going to do both. Man, this is coming along. It's definitely little, looks good. A little bit of work to do to get this all cleaned up, but oh yeah, unresponsive. Okay. So my unresponsive and my unsubscribes. Again, I use weird naming conventions because I want to make sure that things are where they should be and they're not in the way if they shouldn't be in the way. So now I go A099 for unsubscribe, like they're gone. And then a zero nine eight for unresponsive, just to kind of keep them out of the way. Right. We don't want them to be too crazy. So uh, let's do the unresponsive one here. Um, a zero nine eight is going to be the first one. Unresponsive. So with this one, now we're kind of looking for like stale 
stale triggers. Like they've been in a specific stage for too long and they haven't purchased or they haven't responded. Now this one more specifically, I use this one for new leads that come into the system. So if it's not a direct booked appointment, it's a, a Facebook lead form opt-in or a form fill where they did not progress to the next step. So that first workflow, A001, we're trying to get them to respond. We're trying to get them to take action, do something, book an appointment. Like, come on, let's go. But if they don't do that, and if they sit stale in that new lead workflow, update them to unresponsive. Okay. Um, if you've had somebody in a pipeline for X amount of days or in a certain pipeline stage for X amount of days, update them to unresponsive, right? And then, and then nurture them for a little bit longer. So this one, like I said, this is more specifically going to be a workflow for the new lead stage. So maybe not as relevant right now, Correct. Um, but that's kind of what we're doing. And you can even in that first pipeline stage for new lead, after 35 days or however long you want your nurture sequence to be, you can just add them to this workflow. You don't even need a trigger. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then really all we're going to do here is add a tag. Unresponsive. Now in this workflow, you still want to throw out offers to them, right? They opted yeah. in at, at one point. They didn't take action. They didn't do anything. So we're still going to be throwing out offers to these people. And, you know, just going over your structure here. Yeah. That's like, the sort of stuff that you want to send them. You could do this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, correct. So that's what you would build in the unresponsive workflow. Yeah. So unresponsive and nurture, those two workflows can almost be identical, really. They're just yeah. for a different subset of people. One subset showed up to an appointment and then are being nurtured. The yeah. other subset didn't show up to an appointment and are now being nurtured. And if you build out, like, let's say that whole nurture sequence in one workflow, could you just copy that over and just... You um, could just duplicate the workflow, yeah. So, yeah. Um, or... Or what you could do is your, I mean, you got to be a little bit careful, right? Your first session showed nurture sequence is going to be more like, Hey, how was it? Did you enjoy it? We'd love to have you back. Here's an offer. Yeah, here's yeah. an offer. Here's an offer. Whereas you're unresponsive. You're not going to say, how was it? Did you like it? Well, they never came. They never talked to you. They've never shown up yet. So there's a little bit of a distinction between the messages um, that need to be sent. So the reason, the you reason can follow the was, same structure. Like you can build out your structure here. Yeah. Duplicate that one and then just build out an alternate structure for it. Yeah. Okay. The messaging is going to be like, slightly different. If they are uploading uh, their database and they have like all of the people that are non-active, then probably this, the messages would be the same to those guys as it would be to someone that was unresponsive. So it's just like, if you did two workflows for each of them, then you could just copy all of those messages from one of the workflows or to the other one, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. And then, and, th and that's a good, also a good distinction, right? If you've got somebody who like they upload a list of 500 people that aren't in this pipeline, but you still want them in that workflow. Yeah. Um, you could just create a tag, right? So you upload your entire list and you tag them because you want them to be nurtured. Yeah. Um, so we tag each pipeline stage, right? Yeah. So you could also make the trigger for that pipeline stage its own tag. Yes. So, and again, that would be like a no-show sign-up nurture. You just come here and you add another trigger that a contact tag got added and is... Um, the no show, where is it? Am I blind? Oh, nurture. Right. So now if they add that nurture tag to anybody, they're going to enter this workflow. Yeah. Got it. 
and that makes it that that that's clever because then you only have to really build it out once and then you build it out there and then if you wanted to have that with unresponsive you could just copy that whole thing over on the other one as well you bet okay now if you want your list tag nurtures to be in the pipeline you do have to add a update opportunity here so that they show up in the pipeline and yeah, you also want to allow them to move back you want to move allow them to move back to the appointment yeah so i would think what would make a lot of sense is like anyone that is nurture it's just if they reach out again they get they would get added back into a pipeline based on on their response right so you wouldn't want to have all of those people in a pipeline yeah what i what i would i mean this is this is a conversation probably for another time but i would have a subset of tags based on like we we left that first session showed right we left yeah. that tag on so it's like you're going to nurture somebody that showed differently than somebody who hasn't been there for a year yeah right so if they upload a cold list for somebody who hasn't been in for a year um, maybe they tag them something different and then you create a workflow like a nurture sequence workflow that yeah that differentiates by all of those distinctions it becomes like a reactivation yeah workflow for yeah yeah no fully that that makes complete sense cool we got one more left and that'll be a99 a099 which is unsubscribe Now with this one, I actually add multiple triggers. Um, so it's DND, and we're gonna do DND flag is DND for all channels. We're also gonna add DND for email and DND for SMS. DND for specific or DND enabled. Oh, I got to change the other one. DNE enabled for SMS. I'm going to go back into this because I had disabled. We want that to be enabled. And then one more DND for email. I think, did you put SMS in the other one? Nope. I didn't, but I will. Yeah. I also need to name this one email. So I might have been getting a little bit ahead of myself. The DD all channels is really the only one that you need to like update and remove them from all workflows. Now, if you have a specific SMS campaign or you have a specific email campaign um, that they opt out of, then yes, you need to remove them from those workflows. But because we're doing SMS and email in all of those campaigns, we, if they have SMS DND enabled, they'll still receive the emails. They just won't receive the texts. Yeah, The text will not go out. Um, so these two are a little bit redundant, but if you DND them on all channels, uh, you want to update the opportunity um, and we're going to update them to unsubscribes and we're going to do status is lost or abandoned. It doesn't really matter what you do here, but lost or abandoned, just change that there. Um, And then you want to also remove from all workflows. Yeah, I would say including. Including this one, just make that the last step. And then we're going to tag them. Unsubscribed. Uh, this is one thing that you could do with these distinctions here is that you could just tag them unsubscribed all, unsubscribed SMS or unsubscribed email. Yeah. Just as a... That way, if they try to send a bulk campaign and it's all text, they can 
not send it to the people who have unsubscribed SMS. So you yeah. could do that. Um, let's go unsubscribed all. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do the if statement here. Okay, and I'm going to do um, all, all channels. We're going to have a workflow trigger is all channels. And then we're just going to add the SMS. And then email. And then really all you're going to do for those two branches is tag them appropriately. Yeah. And then leave them where they're at. They don't need to leave. They don't need to move. They just need to stay where they are. Yeah. And the unsubscribe, is that automatically detected or is, do, does that have to manually be moved over there? So if somebody clicks the unsubscribe link in your email, automatically going to unsubscribe them. Yeah. If they reply stop to your text, it's automatically going to unsubscribe them from texts. Right. Um, but you can also add, so I do this, in ours, uh, where we have the tag DND, so that if somebody says F off, stop texting me, they just add the DND tag and it removes them. Yeah. So that's another thing that you could do here. But, anyways, dude, we are two hours and 37 minutes yeah, mate. into this, um, and we got a ton done. You've got at least a pretty solid framework for this. Um, can yeah, you handle it's it pretty moving good. forward? Yeah, mate, that that's all good. I'll get the, um, I'll I'll find a way to sort that the uh, that funnel out, and then um, I'll make sure I test everything through. But but that made a lot of sense with um, just trying to restructure the way that that marketing message is going there. So just get them in and let them know that the session is free, and um, if they like it, then there is a really cool program for four weeks with heaps of value at a low price. Totally. Yeah. And then as they build new courses for new different types of people, then you can, you can create new pipelines and then follow the same structure. Yeah. No, makes, makes a lot mate. That's awesome. That that was really like for everything that I'm going to do with this moving forward. It was just like, as a new agency owner, like this was just invaluable. I mean, like, and I hope that there'll be heaps of people that are looking at this and just, even if it's just small parts of what, what the whole session has been about, you know, like there's just so many gold nuggets. So really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for being vulnerable enough to come on and let me do this for you. Plenty vulnerable. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, well, forward, right? Thanks Adam. Anybody who is watching this all the way through. Thank you. Um, if you found this stuff valuable, please let me know. Um, we're going to be doing a whole lot more of this type of stuff and making sure that everybody gets the value that they need. Um, High Level is an incredible platform. It's one of the coolest, most useful platforms out there. But if you don't know how to use it, it is a headache um, and it is very difficult to understand. So please use this group to try to understand it more. Ask your questions. We're happy, happy to answer them. So um, thanks for everybody who watched. Um, whether that was live or on the replay. If you got this far and you're watching it on the replay, let me know. Just add a comment to this that you're watching it still. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you guys and take care.